Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, in the last lesson, I uh, spoke about how to preach true salvation to other members and, and friends and people looking to find God, as well as within the church and what's being taught with the, the teachers and preachers there and many of the congregations that we, uh, we all attend. And I've, I really want to emphasize about teaching scripture as scripture was intended to be taught in a true, pure form. See, we see the disciples of Jesus were taught from the beginning and passed down as those truths to the early church and received them to this day forward. They did not preach a false doctrine or chase after the good life of material prosperity. Rather, they preached righteousness of the gospel, which produced the saints willing to die for their faith, ultimately ending their life just to treat, uh, teach the word in truth and purity as God wanted it to be. Even so much, they would they were willing to die for that, as long as we have the truth today, so that none will be lost. That alone should be worthy of a lot of thanks for their sacrifices and their love for us, though they have never known us yet. The good thing is, one day they will, when we get to go go up to heaven with our Father and. We get to have fellowship with all of those those men and women that we have read in the Bible. See, that's where our story comes into play, and we get we get to be with all those people away from what we know in this world and what we've seen and what we struggle with every day. We'll be around people that love you rather than hate and despise you because of truth. See, many of the current Christian leaders have been deceived and captive to false teachings, not due to the lack of knowledge, but lack of regard and respect for the word of God, which they are they they they, are, they should already know if to be leading a congregation. You're in charge of those souls on what the messages is being preached to you or to them. <clears throat> Obedience to God's basic Basics is revealed truth is ne uh, necessary for righteousness, not just a deeper revelations. Neglecting simple biblical truth leads to sin and not, not so much as the lack or understanding of the word. Much of the uh, popular faith and prosperity teachings contain some truth, but the overall perspective is wrong. Focusing on earthly wealth and self-exaltation rather than the, the truth in the message and what the word says and having a mind as Christ did. The, pro the proper perspective must be seen or come from aligning with God's eternal purpose and the mind of Christ as revealed in those scriptures. Only this will pr produce the purity of the gospel and true make you truly a son of God. It is crucial for teachers to base their teachings firmly on scripture. It's okay to use examples that we can relate to so others can understand as well. But when you deviate from the scripture and focus on things that have no place in the kingdom of God, that's, that's very scary. It's upsetting to see. Because there's many out there that seek the truth and want that truth. They need to be fed truth. Spiritual food is very, very important to the soul. So the scriptures clearly warn that in the last days that many will depart from the faith and heed to seducing spirits of doctrines of devils and not bearing sound doctrine. 
let's check out uh, 1 Timothy 4, verses 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heeds to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And the passage in Ephesians 4, 1, it, it reads, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech ye to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye is called. Ephesians 4 also speaks of the need for the church to come to unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, so that we are no longer tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. And I wanted to point something out here on the words that are being used here. It says, to and fro, and carry about with every wind of the doctrine. Now, if you know your Bible, it's funny to point. It's funny for me to see, and I wanted to point this out. In the book of Job, we're at a place where you see Satan go up to the throne to God and and say, "I I think I think you people, your your man and your people don't love you. They they only love you when they're because of the blessings that you give them, but." Prior to all of this message, God asked Satan, where have you been and what have you been doing? And in response, what does he say? Oh, just going to and from the earth, passing over it. So now, if you read the scripture I read previously, where it says, tossed and froed and carried about with every wind of doctrine, that tells you who that doctrine or message is coming from. Satan wants to toss you about and confuse you and make you follow false truths. For he is the father of lies, is he not? And that's an important thing, is to understand and take time in the scriptures so that when you see certain types of words, you can recognize that. To and fro to me makes me think of Satan due to what the scripture has said. See, you have to be understanding and have knowledge in the scriptures to really know what the true message is and it's our duty to not only share that and teach it it's to live that abide by it and honor it as we were reading the the text indicates that god's plan for the church is to be perfected and unified not by man but by truth We need to be growing up in Christ in all things. If we uh, look into Ephesians 4, 15, it says, But speaking the truth of love may grow up in him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. However, the passage also, also acknowledges that there are those who promote profane and vain babblings that increases unto more what we know is ungodliness. Just like in the Tower of Babel. He confused the people's language so that they would stop sinning and, and worshiping false truths. He wanted pure truth to be taught and understood. In 2 Timothy 2.6, it says, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. In other words, leading you farther and farther away from the truth in God and what He wants for you. The scripture exhorts us to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed and rightly divided the word of truth. I'm sorry, rightly dividing the word of truth. My bad. This this implies that there are those who are not rightly divide that, that don't divide the word correctly, leading to error, false doctrines, and ultimately destruction. So based on these biblical texts, if you recognize in your church that a preacher may be in error, 
because not 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 all people do this intentionally there there are people that lack understanding and then there's those who are false teachers and they know what they're doing mainly mainstream christians churches that you see on the tvs and mega churches and and, and i'm not shaming anybody for trying to find god but God will shame those teachers for leading his, his flock astray. We must stick to truth. Because in, in, in the word of truth, we speak truth and love. So that the body of Christ can grow up in Christ and attain the unity of faith. The goal should be to help the church move away from profane and vain babblings and towards the full knowledge of the Son of God. We have to always maintain truth in a world that's full of lies, that wants us to be deceived. We have our governments wanting to deceive us. We have people in our community that want to do harm or see harm unto others. And it's hard enough with all that in this world. And we need to have men that want to strive to be as Jesus was teaching and understanding. I myself have a lot to learn in the scriptures. That's why I've been spending so much time in, in the Bible trying to find all these truths because it's it is near the end days. It's very close. And instead of worrying about the end of the world, you won't be scared if you're standing in truth. When I want to preach about end times, it's to motivate those people that either are asleep in the word, falling asleep and slumbered and just going through the motions, not really having that joy that you maybe once had. I want people to know the truth so that when that day does come, you're not found in error. You're not found away and separate from the people of God. The apocalypse and 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 all the things that we, we understand about those days should not be scary or even worrisome for a true believer. There is no doomsday with the men of God and, and fellow members in the church that truly love him and have done all right things to be approved by him. When you're teaching prosperity in the church, and it's about money, that's already incorrect. You don't prosper because of money. You prosper because of God. You prosper because he blesses you with love and gifts of his doing, things of the unmaterial world, things that are not flesh. See, if it's about prosperity, the message would be more along the lines of prosperity in one's soul, one's heart, one's mind. You'll prosper then, only then. Money can't buy your salvation into the kingdom of God. And if you associate blessings as money or or gain, you're 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 you're, you're missing out on a lot of the truth that is good for your heart and your mind. Things that will Make you feel every day fulfilled. How do you be feel fulfilled with the word? Well, doing the word. By being those things that we learn about every single day. And yes, we'll make mistakes along the way. Amen? We all do. But does that mean that mistake defines you? Or that's what you are? No. Unless one keeps continuing that way. In error and in and, and lack of accountability and, if anything, just avoiding truth so that you don't have to feel like you're accountable or guilty of it. 
And a lot of the, the churches focus on things that make people feel good. See, even the things that are hard to talk about in the scriptures should still make you feel good. It's the conviction of the heart, maybe, why they don't want to hear or be taught those types of things. Nobody likes to hear that they're in the wrong or doing wrong. But if we're men of God, if we're real Christians, we have to let those know who are in error in a way that is based on scripture and truth. It says to do it in meekness and gentleness as best we can. And I know me, for one, at times can ha get upset when I hear false truths. There is no lie in God, no lie in his word, no lie in anything he's ever done. His, his mercy and grace is allows you to have what we know as free will to make a choice not to be forced that Satan's trying to do in his kingdom. He wants to enslave you. He wants to leave you in the dark and devour you to complete destruction by force, by lies, deceit, manipulation, any of those things. That's what he's striving to do to you and your soul. On the other hand, you have God who gives you the free will to choose to love him back. See, there was a time before the all was created that God still was. And God was essentially alone. So he started creating what we know as life. He created his angels. He created all the, the living things on this earth, including the earth, the water. So that in hopes that one day, once he accomplishes his will through Jesus Christ, that we will one day be with him so that he's not alone. He wants to have us there as his children in his home, as, a, as, a, as guests in his beautiful kingdom. So which ruler do you want to have? One that's going to force or one that wants you to love him as he loves you? I'm going to keep this, this message short today um, because the next one's going to get into some interesting topics that I'd like to discuss and, and show, show all of you that are willing to listen. So... Um, in, sh in short, I'm going to end this message here with a prayer. So let us go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word, your love, your kindness. We thank you for showing us today the importance of truth and keeping truth in what you've, you've shown and testified to us in the words that you've written and you want written on our hearts. We pray that this blesses people that hear this message, that you show them your love, grace, and mercy as you always do, Lord. Forgive us for our many sins, watch over all, and keep us safe this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hope you guys all uh, enjoyed this message, so uh, like and subscribe to our channel if you have not already, and we'll talk to you next time. God bless.